Hey all, Siege here, and today I want to talk about the new community frame and what I, as well as many of the people who watch my video on Ordis, feel would be an interesting spin on it. Now, I'm sure many of those people have a different idea on exactly how it should be done, but we do seem to agree that a new frame centered around Ordis would be an interesting twist to the current Warframe world. If you don't know the hidden story of Ordis, watch this. Many don't know everything this little Cephalon has been through, so if you don't, I highly recommend you watch that video first, or a good portion of the frame isn't going to make much sense. Also, this isn't going to be the typical Warframe submission, as I'm personally more into a quest or story surrounding it versus the abilities or passive it might have. I know, it seems a little weird because usually those are the most exciting parts of any new frame release, but let's be real. Quite a few of the new Warframes just overlap older ones anyhow. I think because of this, the most important aspect of this new frame, for me at least, would be its overall utility. Let me explain what I mean. There are too many frames. I know, people aren't going to want to hear that, but constantly making new frames with abilities that largely mimic others isn't really doing anything for the game other than offering a hype point that usually fades really quickly and makes it harder to balance overall, which just recently was exposed in that certain frames had to be nerfed specifically for the Scarlet Spear event. However, how many more unique abilities can even be added at this point, given how many there already are? I think this type of situation will become more and more prevalent too as the number of frames increases, but because I also know Warframe wouldn't even consider stopping or even slowing down the creation of new frames, I would like to see one that doesn't just function like a typical Warframe, rather one that mimics another quest frame we had in Umbra. Personally, I love the idea of having an actual frame that could be utilized as sort of a specter, the only issue being that currently Tenno combat is still a little weak and feels much more restrained, specifically with the Tenno's movement and arsenal. I'd actually hope that DE would expand on the Tenno's abilities further with the focus system, but more and more I'm beginning to believe we've pretty much seen the extent of what will be done here, so this to me makes Umbra not as useful as I think he could be, and is where I see Ion coming into play. Ion would be a Warframe that can be controlled like a typical frame, able to be used in regular missions like a normal frame, or called down from the orbiter like an air support charge, joining the battle for an extended period of time or potentially until the frame exhausts its health pool, much like a Spectre. Building it would require multiple trips into the weave in order to dig into Ordis's memories as Orden Karras. I feel like this is absolutely possible given the events we see at the ending of Octavia's Anthem, where Ordis has essentially shed his Cephalon persona and reverts almost entirely back to the mind of Orden Karras, speaking and apparently fighting with the same resolve and defiance he had against the Orc in all those years ago. Obviously, this persona is alive and well within, just repressed most of the time. The purpose behind this would essentially be to bring a piece of himself back each time, potentially tied to each of the mismatched frame pieces shown in the concept art. However, the secondary and maybe even more interesting aspect of this would be the memories themselves, as they would be able to give us a look into what the orc and society was like before everything fell apart. Something we really don't get a lot of in Warframe's lore. With each trip, we could either be shown a cutscene or even just given dialogue. These would essentially be memories pulled directly from the weed, something that obviously can be achieved given that Nora Knight did this exact thing in order to provide clues from the Glassmaker. I would go as far as to say that Nora could also be included in this quest, maybe showing us how she's able to gather this information, and who knows, maybe even flesh her story out a little bit, as she's a pretty shadowy character as well, at least at this point. You could even integrate older mechanics into it if you want to. Maybe make scanning Cephalon fragments a part of the quest, as this is how you would gather the necessary resources to sustain your time in the weave, much like how Cephalite does now. This could potentially help those who haven't heard the full order story to do that, you know? Potentially crossing off multiple new and old objectives in one quest. In the end, I feel like you would have a very interesting quest that produces a unique frame, one that has more utility than just straight DPS or crowd control, as well as the ability to use it with the current frame you're already maining. For solo players, obviously having another Warframe helping out would be nice from time to time, and who can honestly say they haven't used a Spectre periodically? during challenging content, if nothing else. This would essentially work the same way. So, it's not a real stretch based on gameplay we already experience. 
Now that you know my core thought process, here is what I would do with the new frame. And admittedly, this is probably the frame's weakest aspect. As I mentioned, he would be more of a support than anything, having more basic abilities. I could see the addition of mods, like the Umbral mods, but instead these would be Cephalon mods, ones that could even increase the efficacy of the frame's abilities the more you equip. I could see these mods be the other ones the Umbrals don't cover, you know, one for range, duration, and efficiency. The amount of draw these mods would require would also be similar to the Umbral mods, thereby making it very hard to put Umbral and Cephalon mods on at the same time. Truth be told, these mods could even come from Simodius, another character that could also be touched on in this quest. You know, the Cephalon that made all the mods in the mod system we currently use. Uh oh, you, you don't know about him? Well, don't feel bad, neither does anyone else. But this could change all that. And the theme of Ion, as I see it, would be based on the shadow persona I talked about briefly in the aforementioned Portis video with each ability tied to an aspect of Carl Jung's model of individuation. Here's a sample of how I at least would associate that with each ability set. So, we look at his first ability, Ego, which projects the best version of himself, increasing his own health and armor while buffing weapon damage for Ion and his allies for a set period of time. This would work largely like Rhino's Iron Skin, but would run out after said period of time. The health, armor, and gun damage buff would be based on power strength, duration, and range. The second ability, Shadow, would produce a dark shadow of Ion, generated from a piece of his frame that follows he and his allies around for a set duration, providing them with damage reduction while the shadow would experience increased weapon damage, at the same time losing a portion of health with each kill. This ability would somewhat mimic Nyx's chaos ability, but would follow allies around instead of enemies. Ion's shadow stats would also be based on power strength, duration, and range. The frame's third ability, Anima, would be used when shadows are active by transferring a portion of health directly to the frame a shadow is protecting as a percentage of the damage it's done, sustaining the frame's ability to push into harder content, something I'd definitely like to see more of in Warframe, you know? Ion's fourth ability, Animus, or you could even call it Beast of Bones, would work by accumulating strength using shadows. Once enough has been gathered, the visage of Orden Karras would appear as a shadow himself, recreating his murdering of the orc and by essentially moving around to enemies within range and weakening or killing targets based on their level as well as the amount of strength accumulated by previous shadows, somewhat mimicking Ash's ultimate. Weakened enemies would have either shields or armor stripped based on that same concept. Finally, I think the passive that fits the frame best would be that Ion can hack and stop alarms without the use of a cipher. This, to me, would be a Warframe that would satisfy on quite a few levels, but it's not an exciting frame, I know. I have to admit, I wasn't even sure I wanted to include abilities and such in with this video because obviously Warframe creation is not one of my strong suits, and probably more importantly, as I somewhat alluded to before, I personally don't even care what the frame really does because I've already got so many and have invested a ton of time in each one I feel comfortable using for basically every situation in the game already. If you aren't keen on the ability set, but like the concept, let me know in the comments what you would do to change it and make it better. Maybe you can succeed where I fail here. I'm more interested in the other stuff that I think could come from something like this, you know? One, it would provide a lore-intensive quest that would actually help newer players have a reason to uncover Ortis' backstory. Two, it would offer new mods to incorporate into builds, much like how the Umbral mods shook up the meta. This type of quest reward, I think, is more in line with what we got from the Sacrifice, the War Within, and the Second Dream, offering, you know, more than just a frame. Also, this Warframe would be great for solo play, long, endless missions, or even events that are just making trouble for certain Tenno. And let's be real. There's really no Warframe with this type of utility in the game. As I said, this would be a much more basic frame, but given its intended usage as well as its adherence to Young's model, I think it's a really interesting concept I would happily grind for, especially if DE were to really dig into the old Oregon world in the process. I'd really love to know more about that, and for me at least, this would have it all with everything I just mentioned, married with more lore about the Weave, Nora Knight, and even Simodius, as I think they all could have a place here, technically. 
But what do you think? Is this a frame you'd go after? How would you change it? I'm all ears and would love to hear your interpretations of it. Who knows? Might even change my mind on what things should be. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video today. It was, uh, it was actually kind of fun to dig into my first frame concept, if you will. Maybe it will lead to others in the future, provided you think I'm onto something here. Time will tell. At any rate, I hope you all have a wonderful day today. A wonderful rest of your week. I'll talk at you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.